Welcome back to Whitey's Whispers, episode 10. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by congratulating the state side on the weekend, beating South Australia. Great result. Um, all five of the South Fremantle boys did a terrific job for the state, so well done to those boys. This week, I have to follow up on a couple of weeks ago when, um, after Saundo's episode, and I've gone with crowd favourite and cult hero, Paul Mugamba. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks for having us, mate. Mate, and first of all, um, I need a... Touch off first. A few weeks ago, Sorno let the cat out of the bag and a bit of a secret about your EP launch. Um, on the weekend, you had uh, a little sneak peek gig down at the uh, Norfolk basement, um, which is super exciting. It was a great turnout. You must have been pretty excited and uh, you must have been pretty happy with the night. Oh, yeah, me and uh, Sorno have been killing it for a while. Uh, <laughs> fat beats, Armageddon <laughs> on the streets. Uh, so we took it, spit some hot fire at Norfolk and, uh, yeah, there was few people impressed, so we're hoping to launch that EP pretty soon. Yeah, cool, mate. And I can confirm um, uh, exclusive on Wise Wishes that the launch date will be on the August buy, on August 15th, mate. You must be looking forward to that. Yeah, look, we can't say too much about the details of it. We're still uh, their people talking to our people, but, uh, yeah, four teams to date. Yeah, good, mate. Mate, looking forward to that. We'll keep the listeners up to date. Um, mate... That must have taken up some time on the weekend, but what did you get up to? Anything else on the buy on your weekend off? Uh, getting a bit older these days, so weekends are a lot different to what they used to be. So relaxed a fair bit uh, with my lovely girlfriend. Um, had a couple of drinks, but yeah, it was just really relaxing, just chilled out and made the most of it. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Um, and mate, after spending 11 years with yourself playing footy, you haven't had to dig up too much dirt. Um, People think you're pretty renowned for taking big hangers and screamers, but I think down the change rooms and uh, at the club, you're renowned for the your love of tequila and maybe st stitching up some blokes on a night out. Can you tell me where that started and uh, maybe some uh, some of your blokes you have stitched up over your time here? Ah, uh, tequila. Well, tequila is actually a um, it's a preferred drink of mine. Uh, it actually started. My older sister got me onto the tequila a while ago, and basically you had to do 10 tequilas in a stint to join the tequila club, so I was pretty <laughs> determined to get there. Don't remember much after that. Um, but notice that I could handle a few tequilas, or at least look like I'm handling them. <laughs> you do that um, well. And so, yeah, just always when we have club functions, things like that, a few beers, always challenge a few people to a few tequilas. So <laughs> over the years, and there's been a lot of events, uh, <laughs> there's been many victims. Uh, the most recent one of note, was uh, Hayden Sloyce 21st, where I managed to take out uh, Sloyder and his old man. man. Yeah, that's right. Um, and was there when they both got kicked out of the big house in Fremantle. So that... oh, very good, mate. That were just a couple of many, that's for sure. And, mate, over your time, and you've had some crackers, um, you look alike. Can you tell me, can you tell me uh, some of them and, you know, what are, you, what are your best ones been? Yeah, look, the uh, look-alikes, it's, it's always makes me laugh. It's pretty much any black actor, musician <laughs> or bloke you see walking down the street um, seems to look like me. So I've had uh, Wesley Snipes was when I first came in. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, a few sportsmen, certainly Brian Lara. I didn't mind Brian Lara. <laughs> Good one. Um, I've had Chris Tucker, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> um, but probably the best one I had was Dwayne Bravo. Uh, one night when I was out, a guy was absolutely convinced I was Dwayne Bravo. I said, mate, listen to my voice. I'm obviously not from the Caribbean. Um, but he, he insisted, so I said, all right, mate, get us a beer. May as well celebrate. Had a few photos. Uh, yeah, good night. Mate, uh, you'd be probably on the plane. Uh, I think next Thursday's the test day in the Caribbean, so you'll play Monday and then be on the flight over to take on the Aussies next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, you know, we're hoping our team can bounce back. Uh, yeah, should be a good tour. Good, mate. Um, and, mate... I think if you're, if you're not the oldest, you're the, close to the oldest player in the comp um, and you've been around a long time, I think from probably about 92 or 94 you would have started, no doubt. Um, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in footy, um, whether it be around the club or just in footy in general? First of all, yes, I am the oldest. Um, I did have a look and I think I'm three months older than the next oldest. Uh, <laughs> 
it's better this year. Last year, as you know, with Hayes, I was actually older than the coach, <laughs> so that's a bit that was a bit daunting. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I first came here 2001, yep. which sounds ridiculous. Um, I was having a look at it. Some of the boys out there were probably about five, six years old <laughs> when I first came. Yeah. Uh, I was year one. It <laughs> <laughs> still amazes me how many boys were born in the mid to late 90s, yeah, no, which is scary. ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, there's been so many changes. We were playing in the, the jumpers were red and white the other yeah. way around when yeah. I first came, which, which Magically, <laughs> is a long time. It would never time. happen now. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time ago. Played with some great players. Um, I've always played up forward, a little bit in the ruck. But certainly, I know when I first came, I used to love hard forward. The half forward position these days, oh, it's such a hard role <laughs> yeah, to yeah. play. So that's uh, the fitness level and, and the speed, certainly something that even in the last 10 years has been massive. Yeah, yeah definitely, mate. Couldn't agree more. Uh, mate, and we've got the, the derby on the weekend. Um, probably the biggest game for the year um, outside of finals, hopefully. Um, you've obviously played and, and, and watched a, f a heap. Uh, you must be looking forward to the game on Monday. Oh yeah, Foundation Day Derby. It's it's the biggest game of the year outside of finals. Um, sometimes it is. It can feel bigger than a final, to be honest. Um, and it's it's what you play for. It's it's one of those games where you know you can play a normal week and there'll be fifteen hundred or so people there, and then you go to a Foundation Day Derby and anywhere from six to ten thousand. Um, and it means so much to the club and to the supporters. Um, and it's important that the players realise how much it means that for a lot of people that might not get to a waffle game, this is the one that everyone tries to get, get to. to. So, yeah, yeah. No, no doubt, mate. Good luck on Monday. And as Paul said, hopefully we can get a big crowd out there and support the boys at Shark Park on, on Monday. And as always, go the Bulldogs.